so the whole world can see us if they want to, I believe. All right. Um, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the live. Um, for those people watching live, we'll take a little bit of a slow start and let people join and see if they want to, um, to watch. Talk about. We're going to talk about the uh, current state of real estate photography, and we have a few people here to share their current stories. And we are hoping other people will pop in and tell us what's going on in their areas and what their reality. Um, real quickly, I should start out. We we're just doing, I've been doing a series of kind of casual live streams on the Photomatics page. And a lot of the reasons are for all of our emotional health when we're a lot of, a lot of largely started at home. And I don't, I don't mind admitting that one of the big reasons I wanted to do this is for that reason for me. <laughs> and so, um, I um, wanted to share what's going on with us in our businesses, but also if you are seeing this kind of thing on this page for the first time, scroll down. We did a really, I, I thought a really good uh, talk that was not so much about photography, but just about how to manage your your inner emotions and stuff during the time in case, because there's a, everybody has their own realities. Some of them are great. They're having a great time with the lockdown and other people are overly stressed for different reasons. So. Yeah. I'd encourage you guys to scroll down and, and see that. Um, all right. I'm going to pop in one more person right now. We are now up to five okay. at a time, and I don't intend to have five on very much, <laughs> but since we're just starting, is, is everybody here first? Uh, my name is Ron Pepper. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. I uh, am. We're doing this on the Photomatics page, and I'm real involved with them, and we have a lot of clients that are, our customers are real estate photographers. So I wanted mm -hmm. to see if I couldn't help the community a little bit. Um, and we uh, I don't know if we should go around and introduce everybody all at once or just kind of talk about our realities. But let's just say for the moment, um, looking at four gentlemen in different areas, each in different areas. And we just got together to share our to, to share what's going on with us. Um, Paul Maynard uh, was we, we cooked this plan up first, the two of us, because I saw that you were working with Paul and uh, also active on Facebook and sharing what your reality was. So let's start with you and, and let you introduce yourself a little bit and uh, give us a, a little bit about what's going on over there in Colorado in the real estate photography biz. All right, sounds good. Hi, everyone. My name is Paul Maynard. I live in uh, Littleton, Colorado, just a little suburb right outside of Denver. Um, I've been in uh, photography business um, We've been doing photography right out of high school, started my company back in 2008 with portraits for about nine years, did really well, but then I got pretty tired of it because of all the processing. So got into real estate photography about three, three and a half years ago. Um, and since then um, really has changed my life, got my life back. Um, to fast forward really with everything that's been going on, I've been busier than ever, uh, just because I'm also an iGUIDE virtual tour operator um, and prior to the, the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, probably out of every 10 shoots, I was doing maybe one virtual tour, I guide virtual tour. Now it's every single property is a virtual tour now. <clears throat> uh, realtors are calling me like crazy. Um, I, I mean, I, I've been busier than I've ever been. The biggest thing that I have found is that the education on how to make realtors um, and sellers feel at ease since we're coming into their home. So the big thing I've been focusing on is creating a lot of videos on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram on how I'm conducting myself. So for instance, whenever a realtor signs up for a tour, I'm asking them to sign a COVID-19 acknowledgement online form, and then also asking them to pass it on to the seller as well. Um, our state mandate has stated that there are no open houses, there are no in-person showings. So basically it says no human contact. So that is some of the things that are listed in my COVID-19 acknowledgement form. Um, I also have made videos and I also tell my realtors that I'm wearing a fresh pair of surgical gloves for every single property that I go into. Um, when I do knock on a door, if for some reason the seller is still at the door, I ask them if they're sick in any way, sneezing, coughing, sniffling, whatever. And if they are sick or someone has become sick within the last 24 hours of our shoot, um, I do not ask them to leave and we reschedule the shoot. Uh, after I finish shooting the property, then I go back and I wipe all my gear down and I'm informing 
all my clients about this. I'm putting a ton of videos on all the realtor Facebook groups within my area. And because of that, every single time that I post a video, um, I'm getting at least one, definitely getting one booking from that. Um, and then have several other people that will reach out to me, ask me questions uh, of how the virtual tours work. So, so the Facebook, I, Facebook Live is working for you, Paul. Yeah, it's working really well. And I like more so than ever before. And I'm, I'm you know, for, uh, social media marketing has been a very big part of my business. I haven't spent hardly any money on marketing whatsoever. Uh, I've, I've spent the time just creating that organic stuff. And right now I feel the education part of how I'm helping everybody feel at ease has really moved me to the top because there's some big competitors here in town and they're not posting anything like what I'm doing. And therefore I'm gaining a lot of business. I would say in the last 30 days, I've probably uh, picked up 35 new clients outside of my regular base of clients that I've had uh, because of the educational piece. So I, I feel that educating people of what I'm doing to help them be safe is important. The other thing that I've been learning too is I see a lot of realtors that are posting on the Facebook groups on, hey, check out my new virtual tour and you go there and it's a slideshow oh, or it's a video. <laughs> Us, us, and 360, so, us 360 photographers really don't like that whole, that is not a virtual tour, guys. No, no. So hey, I, hey uh, Paul, sorry to, sorry to interrupt. I have one question, and I also just wanted to, um, as people start watching live, I can see a few. I uh, just want to mention, if you want to join and come on video and all, look in the, the comments. The first comment is a link to join here, and I can get you on if you have want to share your story or ask questions or whatever. And my question that just came up in my mind for Paul is, um, are people asking for what you've done? You mentioned that you have kind of a kind of a program, like a COVID program. <laughs> and are they asking for that or are they are you getting people that are not concerned or overly concerned or both? Or how's that? Looking? So it has changed in the last seven days because the mandate has been updated three times in the last seven days. And the biggest mandate was change up to this, these big changes, nobody's asked me. So I have gone out and I've been telling people ahead of time, here's what I am doing before we book the shoot. The mandate's coming from the state, the state from the governor. And so that's Colorado again, just for Colorado. Just yeah. And so one of the big changes that happened on Friday was a piece of language that every broker and every broker's attorney has interpreted in a different way, but it does not specifically state that photographers and virtual tour operators are non-essential. So therefore I'm going out and educating people on right now with business as usual. Um, so the, in the last 48 to 72 hours, yeah, the first question is, Hey, are you still working? Are you following the mandate prior to the 72 hours? Nobody was asking me that at all. Um, so it seems to change. And so that's the other thing is that as something changes, it's an opportunity for me to make another video and put it on social, put it on all the Facebook groups and educate. So I can be the person in the front educating the industry on how I can, you know, bring the realtors, buyers and sellers together with no human contact. Um, let's, um, just looking at the comments. Um, Kim, in good in the UK, I was kind of hoping we'd uh, get some representation from other 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 faraway places. Uh, he says very different situation in the UK with lockdown. We stopped house hunting when travel and other restrictions came in force. So the it's, he says he says photography is largely regarded as non-essential. And uh, Chad, that's a technical question. Support at hdrsoft.com, and I'll answer you there. Okay, man. <laughs> um, um, uh, let's let's switch gears, Randy. You, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll let I'll let you introduce yourself. I clearly have to fix myself. I'm uh, I'm Randy Henderson, owner of uh, HendersonImages.com. I'm a real estate photographer out of uh, Springfield, Missouri. I've been doing it about ten years, and um, when I very first got started doing it, I didn't even know what HDR was, and people kept asking me if my pictures were a blended image, and I thought, I don't know what that means even. <laughs> so I went online, and the very first thing that ever came up was Photomatics, and that's the first time I ever started using your product was I used the, I think you had a 30-day trial back then or something, and, and I, we started, use, I used, started using that, but um, typically- Always a trial. Trial never expires. Try it out. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a bad- 
post. Sorry, Randy. No, you're good. I'm putting up uh, your website here, but oh, okay. Also, okay. Um, sorry. Uh, the other thing is, anybody that's watching, um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't introduce uh, the whole thing quite right. Is uh, that was our little photomatics team? We said, hey, what can we do that will be a cool, helpful thing during this time? And one of them, I'm really glad they took this suggestion. Was is that you can, if you want to try all this stuff out yourself, go to um, I'll put the link. I'll put the link in the comments. You can get a lot of information about what we're talking about. We we don't have to talk too technically about bracketing. We don't need to go too much into that. But if uh, you learn about HDR, what we're talking about, including a free license of the Essentials version, Photomatics Essentials. So I'll put in a link for that. That's um, great. I, I forgot. I need, I needed to kind of lead off with that. <laughs> this is this is fun, and there's all of you, everybody's on. Um, Go ahead, Randy. I'm just going to have a couple of your images up as well. So no, you're that. fine. I um, I came at this from sort of a different place. I, I've been in love with photography since I was 10 years old and wanted to go to college for it. And my dad said, well, you're the first person from you know our family to go to college. What do you, what do you want to study? And I said, well, I want to study photography. And he very nicely smiled at me and said, yeah, not with my money, you're not. And um, so I have a degree in business management, but I did take all the photography courses they had at the school. So then I went on to commercial photography school in Spokane, Washington, and then I moved out to the Midwest and there was absolutely no business out here at all to be had. And so I ended up getting a real estate license and did that for 15 years while shooting weddings and portraits and stuff on the side. And then all of a sudden the realtors decided they needed better pictures of their property. And there I was. So um, in a good year, I'll shoot 1200 a year. Um, that is not going to happen this year, probably, but I'm down by, Oh, probably I'd say 50%, maybe, um, which isn't the end of the world, especially when you're 60 years old. It's in fact, I told you guys earlier, I said, it's, it's actually kind of nice. Um, you know, cause this is typically the time of year that I'll be doing six a day, six days a week. And I'll get up and leave the house at nine and I'll go to bed at 10 and get up and do it again. Doing, and, you're doing all of them yourself. Unlike, yeah, unlike someone yeah. we'll hear from here in a second. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't uh, send out my editing or anything. I just, I don't know. That's kind of the part I kind of like, and um, I don't know. To me, I we talked about this before. It's, it's really to me, it's about the photography. It's, it's. I, I make this, this, and, and this really is a joke. Is I always tell people that my club, my realtors think that they're realtors and I'm their photographer. The truth of the matter is, I'm an addict and they're my dealers. And they're, they, they, I mean, literally, that's how it works. So. Um, but yeah, the COVID thing is interesting now, now, now as compared to Paul, um, we're pretty loose out here with it. Um, the, the governor kind of didn't want to declare the lockdown and then he finally did, but a lot of things have been deemed non-essential, including realtors and realtor support staff, which is essentially me. So I'm kind of riding on that coattail. But um, just to give you an example, hardware stores like Lowe's and Home Depot, huge big hardware stores, they're deemed essential businesses here. So, of course, people are bored to death and they're going out and buying plants and flowers and hot tubs and, you know, whatever. So, I mean, it's except for having the restaurants and all the, the retail stores basically closed down. It's sort of business as usual. There's still plenty of cars on the road. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. I'm, I'm glad to hear it's might be a little bit like that in Cal out here in California, at least not in the cities where it's, you can pretty well, much work. And, and our, um, we haven't been affected. I think I said earlier, we've got a huge, two huge hospitals here. We're a big cancer research center. One of the hospitals just finished a new wing and they hadn't even done the infill yet when this happened. So they literally turned seven floors into a COVID center and they've got the ventilators and the beds and they're ready to go. And we have, I mean, we've had, I think, maybe 24 deaths or something like that and maybe two or three hundred cases but it's not anywhere near what you know some of the other places are having so it was um let me bring in rob moroto from he's in uh, calgary and i know he's got a different kind of business where if i remember correctly rob you don't you have other photographers working for you as well and yeah i'd be curious to hear what and i know it's i don't know if it's snowing up there or what but um yeah let's <laughs> let, tell, tell us what tell us what your what's your new normal or whatever you want to call it fair enough yeah uh so we've got a company called calgary photos we've got uh let's see now we got five six five six seven photographers videographers uh we all we shoot for uh realtors all the time uh i would say 90 percent of our businesses for realtors and then 10 percent of our businesses for uh for builders 
But um, we run into a little bit of a different situation where up here, uh, there, are, there are a lot of uh, government subsidized uh, grants and programs so that, you know, if you do lose your job up here, then the government essentially pays you $2,000 a month just to be unemployed. Uh, so a lot of my guys up here, they're, you know, I've got one guy that has a three week old baby. So he's like, I don't know if I want to work and put myself at risk with the baby and all. And so he's gone you know completely completely cool and um, we we completely support him but you know as soon as he's gone then he's off then that just creates more volume for everyone else and you know just like paul you were saying we're just booming up here with um with uh, virtual tours so whether it's i guide or matterport we're, we do both and we're just getting swamped with uh with work on on that stuff but what we find up here is just like to your point, Paul. You know, it's it's about the what are we doing to educate people, the helping part, very important. What we're doing up here is we like I'm doing calls every day to builders and uh, realtors, and what we find is that uh, uh, they appreciate the additional marketing help that they get. Like for example, I was talking to a, a builder uh, today, and we were saying, well, you know, what are, what are we what are we doing, or what do we re recommend to uh to all of our uh builders out there and we give them a story about what we recommend to say a realtor and say look you know you're doing a matterport you're doing a virtual tour of a house before we shoot this here hide an easter egg somewhere because easter's coming and they're like well what what is that going to do and said well you hide the easter egg then you put it onto your social media it's like hey we've got an easter egg hunt for you guys go look at this virtual tour if you can find the easter egg Send us a send us a DM or send us an email, and you will be entered for a takeout dinner somewhere. And again, that supports local. That that improves engagement and stuff like that. Where we're really trying to coach our our clients as to how to market through this. And so even on our Instagram, uh, we're doing this where every day or every second day we're giving out marketing tips to realtors. Like we just put one out saying, you know what, realtors, if you're you, if you're telling your clients don't list now because you don't need to and it's not a good time to do it well why not also ask them at the same time to give you a google review right like imagine coming out of this and being the realtor that has you know 50 new google, five star google reviews because all you did was connect with your clients to you know see how they were doing and same thing with all of our builders we're doing the same thing we're also telling our builders it's like okay here how about this do a facebook live of a show home that you have shut down and you, you just have your salesperson there and you, you watch your, your phone and you say, well, hey guys, here's a, we're doing a Facebook Live. Look at this. Uh, we have this countertop and this. And the brilliant thing is if you've got other people that are, uh, that are now isolated at home, give them an email and say, hey, you know what? All of you, you're part of our company. Get on Facebook Live, follow, view this stuff, and now do the comments so that, you know, yes, it's your own staff that's doing the comments and it's kind of cheeky that way, but at least that way, you know, whoever's doing the Facebook Live, they've got content. They're like, oh, hey, look, Janice over here is asking what the countertop is. It's like, well, good, quite, good question, Janice. That is a quartz countertop and that and that's great because if you have a party and you leave your red wine there, it's not gonna leave a ring. And, you know, it's hokey, but that's what it is. We need to be able to show our realtors that we're trying to support them in, in maintaining their business or growing their business now. And I think that is what's really helped us out because we're showing people that, yeah, you know what, we're trying, we're trying to, we're, tr we're there with you. We want you to succeed and try this really, tip, try that tip. It's so. a really, really good point is that, that I think the, the kind of the lockdown or quarantine or whatever level we have is just this really great opportunity to remember that usually what helps one helps all in most cases mm -hmm. and it's a really great time to kind of take a little step back if if you need it and, and figure out what's and that's why that's why we're here that's my intention of here being here anyway yeah. to try to help as many people as possible hey um what's a uh, juan jose's here you want to share a little bit about what's going on down there in ecuador yeah you know, i know you guys have some really specific laws and yeah, yeah tell us uh, tell us what's going on well, yeah, my name is Juan Jose Perez. I'm from Quito, Ecuador, South America. And the situation here is totally different, though, uh, comparing with what is happening in the United States, for example. Here in Ecuador, the situation is terrible. Uh, we have a lot of uh, people sick, so the government made a lot of uh, 
rules and uh, they are controlling the people not to go out from, I mean, you can go out from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then the rest of the day you cannot work, you cannot be outside, you have to stay in your home. So that makes you, um, of course, you have less opportunities to do business and at the same time you cannot, like we were talking about later, run that we cannot do like um, dusk pictures. And, uh, but interestingly, uh, one thing that is happening right now in Ecuador uh, in terms of real estate is that uh, they are asking more for virtual tours, as you mentioned before. So applause, uh, applause, applause for virtual tours. Yeah, so they are they are asking more for virtual tours. Uh, they are not necessarily uh, Matterport or or iGuide, but also the traditional virtual tours where DSLR, uh, you know, cameras and I stuff. My, I, have, I have my guesses, but do you, are they telling you why they're interested more? In the, the what? I have my guesses of why the virtual tours would suddenly be more popular, but do, are they saying why? There's yeah, because of- yeah, it's it's exactly because of the quarantine and the people can because of the situation of what is happening here in Ecuador, uh, the people doesn't want to go out because we are in a very very bad travel in terms of uh, illness and what is happening here, especially in one of the cities which is called Guayaquil. I'm not in Guayaquil. I'm in Quito. The situation here is not that as bad as what is happening in the other main city of Ecuador. But that's why, I mean, they, they don't want to go out and that's why uh, 360 virtual tours are, are very, not very, but it's, they, they, they are increasing in, in demand. So we're, we're, uh, are you saying I'm missing out on an opportunity to get more virtual tours going? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, really quick, well, just while there's a little stop, um, some comments coming in. Hey guys, uh, the first the first comment in the in there is is the link to join us here if you want to share. Some people are sharing a little bit about their situations, and you can do it on here live if you want. It'd be nice. It's it's, it's casual. There's no requirements. Because <laughs> um, I I see we've got uh, Canadians from BC. We have um, Florida. You have people from all around. I can't really read all the comments that fast, but maybe I'll read a few of them. But um, yeah, sorry, interrupted you there, Juan Jose. Um, no, so okay. uh, we we uh, we're um, we were commenting earlier. I find it really strange that you can be out from certain hours, five a.m. to two p.m. I mean, for us, that's right. for us night owls, that's horrible. First of all, but the, um, also you can't do the dusk shots. So are you doing dawn shots to? I mean, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if you're being asked, but do you think that's a yeah, more or less good solution? Yeah, more or less that could be uh, the same thing, right? But uh, as, as uh, I mean, in terms of uh, lighting and uh, and the, 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 the final photo result, uh, but no, they are not asking right now for that. They are more focused in, uh, in virtual tours. That's the situation right now, this, this last month. I don't know what is going to happen the next month. And a, and a virtual tour is not a slideshow. Of course not. <laughs> I, want to, I want to get that out there. Virtual tour is a 360 degree shot. You can be totally sure that it's a 360 virtual tour, a real one, not a slideshow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're and they're um you know to do it right is pretty tough, right, guys? I mean, to do a do 360s really well, uh, it's uh, takes it, it takes a lot from experience workflow uh, good solid photography we're not talking about the the um the instantaneous ones that don't look very good we're, mm-hmm. the, the people here the people on this group i think know how to do that um yeah who, who else got uh, go ahead guys i'm just going to check the comments and mute myself you guys can go crazy <laughs> we've got a uh, Hey Rob, I got a question for you. Sure. Since you are doing Matterport and mm-hmm. iGuide, yeah. Since that's what floods the markets, either Matterport or iGuide, um, how how do you what do you see is more beneficial from one product to another? Well, what we found is that uh, there's we personally like I personally like the Matterport better in terms of how it interfaces and how you can walk through and I like the dollhouse better. Uh, I find that the iGuide is just a little uh, um, 
it's it's just the three sixties and and the the map, which you know what the map is actually great. We've got uh, a bunch of uh, commercial clients as well uh, that like the having the map there because it's like a commercial uh, portfolio uh, brochure. So depends on what the usage is, and as well, it's the cost. Let's face it, Matt, uh, I guide charges by the square foot. Matterport charges by uh, the month in terms of your scans. And so when you get into a bigger place, like if you get a 5,000 square foot place and you're using iGUIDE, the cost for us to produce it is going to be higher than it is going to be if we use the Matterport. But if you switch it around and you do it where it is a smaller condo or a apartment size place or a small house, then the iGUIDE becomes more economical. So we look at our clients and we say, look, we can uh, do either or. If you're doing this because you want floor plans and measurements that you can ensure uh, for complete accuracy, well, iGUIDE is a great uh, way of doing that. Uh, but if you're doing this for just uh, 3D tours or virtual tours, then you really have the option of going with both. And at, at around for us, the cutoff is around 4,000 square feet. After 4,000 square feet, it's more economical for people to go with a Matterport than it is to go with an iGUIDE. And we show everyone that. And actually, one of the other things that we do is we've started uh, doing this thing with um, uh, with Matterport, where we can create uh, these really cool eye guide uh, or sorry Matterport posts for uh, Instagram. And that's one of the shortfalls for a lot of uh, virtual tours is that you can't take the virtual tour and put it onto Instagram or onto Facebook. Well, you can put Matterport onto Facebook, you put your iGUIDE onto Facebook, but there's nothing for Instagram. So uh, when our clients called us and said, well, I got a virtual tour, now, now, now what do I do with it? Uh, we decided, well, let's find out. So actually, Ron, if you can pull it up, go into uh, Instagram at instagram.com slash calgaryphotos.ca. Um, you'll see one of the, the posts that we created for one of our clients. And it is um, essentially what we do is we take the Matterport, we then make that into a video. We put all of uh, these really cool, uh, we, we brand it for them and then we put it online. And so uh, there we go. Oh, there's me, you know, talking about the episodes that we're doing where we're talking to, uh, uh, to our clients. So if we keep on scrolling down, uh, I think we got it. Uh, a little bit more down. There it is on the lower left right now. The Abby, the one that says Abby with the green uh, logo. Yeah, I'm not signed in on this browser. <laughs> okay, so if anyone's on, on Instagram and just looking at that, then take a look at that one um, because it'll just show how we can actually go from Matterport onto making it into an Instagram post. And as well, we also make those where we create it in the 16 by nine format tall. So you can put it on as IGTV stories or oh. your- I'll get, um, I'll get it signed in in just a minute. We can circle back. But yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So that's, okay, that's what well, we found. Um, one thing you can tell us in the meantime, um, real quick guys, iGUIDE shoots outside or no? Uh, yes. So that, that's the, I, I'm really just learning about iGUIDE. I, I don't know why I'm so behind on this, but that's- Yeah, I don't, me. I don't have a lot of clients that request the outdoor stuff, um, just because of that fisheye, you'll, you know, you get that sun that's right in there. So it's, it, you can do it, it looks okay, but most of the time it's just better indoors. Mm -hmm. No, agreed, agreed. We, uh, we do it if uh, they need the balconies, uh, outlined but aside from that no backyards just there's no real point we can take better photos just right. using our cameras yeah. yeah how are you finding the uh, the eye guides down there like has it, has it become pretty popular so yeah it's it's super popular i mean i've been out there pushing it really hard um because i looked into matterport and I wanted to separate myself from what everyone else was doing because we have a really competitive market when it comes to real estate photographers here in Denver. And so everyone's doing Matterport, so I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. So when I found the eye guide, I figured, well, if I'm the only guy here and I can really put some marketing out there, it could change my business. And it absolutely did. It's uh, the more I educate people about it, 
the more people want it. And it's, you know, it's 50, 50 with the realtors. I mean, right now, you know, you, I, I can talk it, any realtor that's been using a Matterport with a different photographer, I can talk them into an eye guide within two minutes. Um, yeah. So yay for me, but you know, I know as soon as another eye guide operator comes into town, they're going to get busy real fast because I'm, I'm, uh, putting all the information out there about it. The one thing that, I, that I'm hearing from the realtors is that they're having a challenge looking at the Matterports on their cell phones. So I don't know if, if that's a universal thing or if it's just realtors that are not that tech savvy, which a lot of them, as we all know, are not. Um, so that's to our advantage. But no, yeah, definitely. it's been it's been super popular, and it's been you know I was talking when we were talking earlier today. Um, prior to COVID, out of every ten shoots I was doing, only one I guide, and now every single property that I do is it's ten out of ten out of ten now, um, and then people seem to be loving it. So you know, is it an add-on? That's fantastic. Is it an add-on, or is it just part of your part of no, your? I, I started off as I call the eye guide listing package and I include everything in it. So they get the photos, they get the eye guide, they get the floor plan. You get a property website, you get a flyer creator, one click social media marketing, um, the branded unbranded links. I'm trying, I'm just throwing everything into one, one bundle. So it makes sense. And since I was a realtor in my past, you know, I understand what, how realtors want to spend their marketing dollars, which is not a lot. So if I can bundle it and, and not nickel and dime everybody, then it really makes sense to them. And I gain a lot of, uh, a lot of business where a lot of the other real estate photography companies, they're nickel and diming for every little thing. They're charging for a property website. They're charging to, to create a flyer. They're, you know, they're charging for the little tiniest little, you know, uh, changes. Um, and I'm not going to do that, you know, and I, I do, you know, five to at least five a day still right now, prior to COVID, I was doing, you know, up to seven a day. So I'm still busy and, and I'll do those extra things so I can go that extra mile. I think that's the thing that all of us photographers here, that all of us here are doing is, you know, we're doing a little extra right now, giving a little more. Not that we weren't doing this before, but that a little extra customer service, a little extra way of how to help those realtors also is going to make us stand out. So when when everything calms down, realtors can be, wow, when things were crazy, you know, these guys helped me out. So I'm going to continue working with them instead of going back to the, you know, the big box company guys. Going, going back uh, a couple of questions in the comments, we've got one um, first uh uh, Jody, I think at the timing of the question, I think the answer is eye guide that Paul uses. Uh, but somebody else also asked um, what equipment you guys are using, and we've got uh, we have two two here that use the eye guide and one matter. Rob, you use both, right? Yeah, we got uh, we've got two Matterports and then three eye guides in our company. So let, let me chime in for um, speaking for me, DSLR <laughs> <laughs> uh, and three uh, sixties. Uh, we're talking about the tour. So the eye guide, <clears throat> eye guide, and the Matterport are those really great, cool factor uh, cameras that create the dollhouse um, layout and everything. And, and it's great. I mean, I don't complain about it at all. Uh, the the photography is automatic, so it's not as good as you can do when you take full control of the camera and use your SLR. So that's that's kind of the difference. Um, and, of course. And and we uh, we agree. We uh, we still do the the three sixty the old fashioned way where we can actually light everything. Just as long as we're doing it with uh, uh, at least four panels, we can hide the lights properly to get it done, and it's, it looks great. But well, I, I, it's, you would, uh, I would love to have a conversation just about how you do that. I've been doing it, doing those for a long time, and I've always said trying to light a three sixty what a what, what a headache. But oh, also, what's yeah. A, well, and it, so I mean, I've been I was one of the original. Um, like when HDR was born into the photography world, I was right there because prior to that, instead of lighting, I was just compositing everything. And I was just doing a lot of, uh, hey, I was doing it before there were layers, just just for my own cred. And uh, anyway, it got easier and easier. So that's where I come from. But I would love to compare. Let's do a whole, let's plan something and do a whole talk about, <laughs> about lighting. <laughs> um, but I wanted to keep going on a couple of other uh, comments. Um, sure. Good question here. Can you shoot an eye guide with a Theta camera, Bernardo? Uh, no, eye guide yeah. is its own camera system. 
So they, in fact, um, I know Matterport has open, given the ability, created the ability now to use a mm -hmm. Theta, <clears throat> and anybody watching a Theta, that's one of those instant 360 cameras, has a little bit the same same issue with, this is my opinion here, guys, but a um, uh, little bit of the same issue where the quality of the photo is limited by the tiny device and the convenience, but I mm -hmm. love my Theta at the same time. Um, and uh, where was I going? Matterport has made it available to use their app with the Theta, so you can create Matterport without buying their camera, which I think is, I got, I'm looking, I need to get time to test that out. So anyway, you're okay. saying iGuide is, a, that's a closed, closed system, right? Yeah. Okay. Any, I have a question. I have a question for you guys. How often did your clients ask you for dual 360 aerials? Oh, you know what? We've never been asked for a 360 aerial. That's a that's a good one. We I guess we could uh, try. Like if we got a Theta or uh, what's the other one? The uh, one. Uh, what was it? The um, doesn't want the Matterport to do. Call. Call. Um, call um. Which one? <laughs> uh, Insta360. That's it, the Insta360. Yeah. No, I guess the thing I like about the Insta360 is that their uh, program will actually get rid of the tripod for you. So if you are doing it on a drone, per se, and you hang it upside down, you would get rid of a good portion of the drone as long as you drag it down long enough. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to try. Yeah, but do, uh, do you, oh, drone, do drone, 360, drone 360s are easy, guys. They're built. They're they're usually built into the drone. They have a capability of just taking the series for you. You can even bracket. Yeah. And oh they, really? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, there are some apps for doing that. Yeah. You you don't necessarily need a 360 camera like place it in uh, in the drone itself, but you can actually use the same camera as the drone, and mm, right, they right. they do it automatically. Really? Yeah. Oh, fantastic! We'll have to take and take a look into that. Yeah, we had um, the only thing keeping me from. Let's see, there's one thing keeping me from drones is just all the licensing and stuff, and so I've uh, oh, no. asked someone else to do it for me when I've been asked. And I was, no. Am I? Am I guess seeing. Yeah. Oh, Maybe. actually, Ron. Yeah. Uh, sorry to inter interject here. Uh, you, you've got you still have that uh, Instagram uh, up there. I'd say like, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, play it for everyone, just so that they can see what you can do with the Instagram. And then after that, I'll tell you about one of the other benefits of uh, of using an eye guide instead. Okay, what do we have here? We have uh, we get the full screen. I'm technically getting this down as we go. Here we go. Okay, there, there's the dollhouse. Is this working? Yeah. And so now you can walk through the entire place, which you know, you wouldn't be able to do with just a link. Right. Right. I did. This is a relatively new addition, if I if I recall. Well, it's it, you know we uh, essentially what we did was we we took it, we jigged it, and then we we do all the video processing in house. Um, but you, you chose you chose the order that it that it walks you through, or is this a yeah, so we can uh, we essentially create uh, for anyone who does matter for essentially what we do is we take a highlight reel, we do a screen capture of it, take it out, uh, and then take into Premiere Pro, cut it, and then uh, do all the branding on top of it. So Impressive. that works out really well, and all of our clients are just going gaga over this. And we've got people who are trying to get their providers to transfer their matter ports over to us so that we can do this for them. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, if you want to go, if you could go to a company or a website called uh, virtualstagingusa.com, I'll show you one of the other really cool things that uh, the iGuide can do. So with this, um, of course, you guys all know virtual staging. Uh, with iGuide, you can actually do 360 virtual staging. So if you actually have a place where it is a vacant home, you can go to uh, let's see now. Uh, no, not that one. The uh, the 360 virtual staging there. What it does is that place is vacant, and then you can then get that virtually staged with furniture. So you can't do that on a Matterport. You can't edit out the Matterport itself from a mirror. Whereas with iGuide, because it is photos and photospheres, we can do this. 
So that kind of stuff is really cool. cool. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, cool. Yeah, the virtual staging has really kind of started to take off, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah I was going to show, um, let's see here. A lot of tabs, a lot of tabs. <laughs> so the virtual tour is a, a big apartment complex, but they wanted to start from aerials, which was the, I, I, oh, wow. I, the, I didn't do the licensing. So I had to get somebody else to come out and do it, but that was the easiest part of the whole thing. And so the, the drone does, they have settings to take 360s. It's fantastic. What, what drone did you use in this one? I don't recall. Like I said, that one wasn't mine. And uh, subcontract somebody to do that part. And so, I mean, the, it's, it's great. It's one, of, it's one of those situations. This is a little bit like Matterport and iGuide and, um, and Theta cameras and all that. It has a lot of limitations because of, well, it's miniaturized and all that. So if you look at, for instance, like toward the sun, it didn't handle it very well. I don't know how, how well you can see that on this, on this screen, but it didn't handle that very well. The contrast got really confused, but most of the photo looks quite good. Mm -hmm. And um, again, it was this automatic. Uh, I have uh, flown drones messed around over the bay and just set in panorama mode, but then um, you know, it was a lot more work to do the the interiors are a whole ton more work cool. <laughs> because you had to, and, and it's San Francisco in the summer, so I had to wait for a, a clearing in the fog. But that that all set aside, um, you know, those drone shots are actually the easy part. It's it's interesting how they, um, you know, it's easier to photograph, of course, outside, right? And, uh, these um, anybody that does three sixties, you know, it's a whole lot easier to shoot these exteriors that have a little bit less dynamic range to, to throw in there. But anyway, I just thought I'd show what uh, the, the, the DSLR virtual tour is look, <laughs> looking like. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Go back to you. Doesn't look very good on the screen, though, does it? Well, um, what other questions we have coming up in the comments? Anybody watching? Ontario, somebody's there. You got Rob, you got props on the Easter egg concept. Um, uh, tech Savvy Daddy, really? That's the name they're going with? <laughs> um, not a Zoom link. Is a StreamYard link up at the top? Start the StreamYard. First comment in there. You have to use Chrome, I think. Um, Agents aren't interrupting or going into houses. Photographers charging should be charging danger pay. Okay. <laughs> anybody anybody feel like they're in danger? No. No. Well, you know, it's um, we did have one incident where our clients called us up and they said, "Oh, we need you to go shoot this this uh, this one place," and we said, "Okay, fine." We searched it up on Google, tried to find out what it was. It was a senior's residence. And so as soon as that happened, we said, well, we respectfully decline, yeah. <laughs> not for us, but, you know, I, I hate to say it, but um, us going into a senior's residence is just not a good idea at this mm -hmm. time. So I'm mm. surprised that they would, I'm surprised they would want to do that. Like, I, right? I, think, I think like you guys, I'm not, I'm not going crazy to stay away from anyone i go I, if i need to go get something at costco i go and i'm not freaking out about it but i'm also not going to go like if my if my parents were right here i would not be hanging out with them i would bring stuff to them and see how i could help but i wouldn't be you know. so yeah just be reasonable yeah, guys I to the grocery store today and i had on a i had a i shot for a doctor the other day and he gave me a couple of n95 masks please don't come rob me but um, I was wearing gloves and an N95 mask, and half the people in that grocery store were in their 70s and 80s, no gloves, no masks, no nothing. Wow. And I thought, this is crazy. I mean, I, I, I don't understand that at all. Now, I will wear gloves when I shoot. Um, I'll wear the mask if they ask me. I have a real tendency to not want to wear the mask because I know this sounds cheap, but it, it your breath comes out through the top and fogs your glasses. It's just a big pain. Mm -hmm. And I so I just don't, I just don't do it. But, um, I've, I've got, uh, 
COVID-19 Mary over here, my wife, and she makes me shower two seconds after I walk in the door. So um, I think we're pretty safe, but you know, I, I don't, people are taking it not very seriously out here and I, I don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to, it's hard to see. And in, in here in Colorado, we've been uh, requested to, uh, to wear masks just in the general public. Um, and then just one other step that I'm taking is I do wear a mask you know, when I go into a house and I'm letting people know that as well, just for one extra precaution. But yeah, it's it's a real pain because it clogs up my glasses all the time. Um, I do have an N95 mask as well. And if I and if I work the nose piece right, I can make it so I don't fog up. But it's, um, you know, just also, again, it's helping the public, the general public feel more comfortable um, when I'm gonna go into a home saying, hey, here's what I'm doing. I think, again, like Rob, what we were talking is let's keep everybody feel at ease and tell them here's what I'm doing, but not just telling them, making a video and showing them what we're doing. That's we have proof to show what we're doing. So when this all calms down, the business is going to flood our way because they see us going the extra mile. But yeah, same thing going out to the stores. It surprised it surprises me that a lot of people still aren't wearing the mask, even though the governor's saying, hey, come on, if everyone wears masks, you know, maybe we can get this to come down faster and uh, a lot sooner than, than what expected. So is anybody getting a mask with your logo on it? No, but I got this from Amazon today and my wife is going to make masks out of it. Tomorrow. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I want one. <laughs> you, you got, you got your first customer. Yeah. Yeah. You can you share those around? I don't know. How, I don't know how much COVID they'll keep away from me, but they look yeah. cool anyway. Actually, you know what? The reason I bought that was to put it on my face and change my selfie picture in, uh, in Facebook. Literally. I mean, cheap, cheap you know vagrant marketing but i mean i don't care what I, you know yeah i'd either want one with uh something photographer um either that or uh obey you know that one yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah or or just somebody send me a seahawks mask i'll wear that that's the end <laughs> you know i get beat up this is kansas city chiefs country out here i'd get beat up for that's that. that's cool you <laughs> randy randy, randy, randy is randy is always a one i'm gonna be uh, inner circle because he's a Seahawks fan, and we are both well, living, and we're both fair, living in since be, since before probably three of these people were born. So I mean, I've been a Seahawks fan an awful long time. Yeah. So. Me too. Me too. Um, I'm, I'm over here in 49er country, and you're over there in Chiefs. Anyway, we shouldn't be talking about football. I'm sorry. I am. Um, I, I went into a Jets family, so <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot of coming up here in a minute. I'll tell you that Juan Jose is like that ain't a sport. Yeah. Um, what? With, um, well, Calgary too. He's like, what are you guys talking? About? Um, when the comments will will street will uh, uh, starting to hear horror stories from agents going into listing presentations of quarantine homeowners and then and also was mentioning uh, they think the see that clients are getting desperate and so are agents I think it says um, yeah so they'll they, yeah oh so you have some people acting irresponsibly like uh not sharing where they've been and stuff like that yeah well we yeah if, if you're if you're the homeowner trying to sell and maybe hey maybe you need to maybe it is, maybe it needs to be now and there's a lot of things riding on that yeah i can see i can see that um well that's a challenge because that was one of the big reasons why the mandate got updated three different times this week we had a listing agent who had a house out there and their sellers uh tested positive for COVID and then they were telling buyers agents, oh yeah, it's no problem, come on into the house, well, I'll just tell the sellers to leave. And that was a big no-no. And so all of a sudden the whole industry, like every real estate association, Facebook group was just blowing up and realtors were calling me and going, what's going on? So of course I had to make some new videos regarding it, but yeah, we do have a couple of irresponsible Unfortunately, a couple of irresponsible realtors out there that, you know, they just they're trying to sell the property or they need to make money or the seller is, you know, really desperate. And that ruins it for all of us, unfortunately. Well, the other thing is if what we've found is that if um, you look at realtors and you, you ask yourself, why are they doing this? And a part of it is that they just if they're isolated, if they're stopped and they're told not to do anything, well, it's like a child. You try and tell them to sit down and stay. They're not going to. They're going to want to do something. So you got to give them something else to do. And so one of the things that we've been telling them is like, okay, you know what? Call uh, call your buyers. Call people. Like, don't don't focus on the sellers right now. 
call your uh, call your buyers and say, hey guys, have you guys gotten pre-approved? Get a rate hold, get this, get that. Like prepping them so that when it comes better, it's done. And the same thing, if you've got sellers, it's like, don't list now, don't list now, but you know what? Let's do the staging stuff. Like we're, uh, one of the things that we've been talking about is um, trying to coach homeowners to stage their houses better because how many times have we gone into a house where it looks like crap? And you look at it and it's like, okay, this place oh, can't I'm sell, yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, and horror, so the horror stories. Yeah. It's better for a realtor to go in to tell their their homeowners like, okay, take out all the personal uh, photos and replace them with something else. Like, here's a great tip that we've been giving out to uh, to, to sellers is, uh, you guys have uh, let's you know up here it's Indigo and Chapters. Uh, what's your big bookshop down there? Is it uh, Barnes and Nobles? Uh, yeah, at least it used to be. Okay, well, coffee table books, like nine ninety nine cheap coffee table books with pictures of motorcycles in them or something like that. Get one of those, cut it up, put it into all the picture frames that are in a person's house that is going to go up for sale so that you depersonalize the house. Because let's face it, a buyer is going in and they don't want to buy your house. They want to buy their house. So the less deperson, the more people, uh, the more depersonalized it is, the more likely that the new buyers are going to think that is theirs. And that will show up in the photos as well. And so we've been telling our realtors, it's like, okay, don't list now, but talk to your sellers, have them prep their homes so that is picture perfect by the time we do get in there. And yeah, now all of a sudden our realtors have something to do, which is, yeah, you know, it's telling the child, well, instead of sitting down, you can do this then. <laughs> yeah, Rob, you're, it sounds like you're really involved. You're really involved with the, the real estate industry as a whole more than a lot of us that are. You know, I used we, to be like, uh, like a lot of some of some of us are not only, like where you do real estate photography, but that's one out of several things. So not only is it not the only thing we do, but you know, it's like you can't you know, be as involved. So I, I love the ideas that you're coming up. Is great. Yeah, well, I come from a different background. Like you guys come from photography or from um, or from real uh, from real estate. I I actually used to be a marketing director for developers, so it's always been about how do you market, how do you change the messaging, how do you repurpose the stuff that you have. And so now is a perfect time because I can I can use these things to help all of our clients get. Um, more marketing savvy and uh, just trying out new things. So uh, it's a great awesome. time in, it. in that sense. Other senses, it's not a great time, but yeah. So for all of you guys using wearing masks and wearing glasses, uh, mm -hmm. Sue in the comments said when she hit the scuba dive, they would use a product or spit in the mask to stop it from fogging. So spit on your, <laughs> on your, <laughs> Or actually, I learned it was toothpaste, right? Or that was just a clean toothpaste. I can't remember. Yeah, toothpaste. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think uh, Randy is going to be spitting on his glasses. Yeah, me, yeah. <laughs> With all the time I spend cleaning the darn things. <laughs> I, I, my biggest problem was I scratched them up. I use a right angle viewfinder because it saves my back, you know, from having to look into the camera so many times. And I can't tell you how many pairs of glasses I've trashed with a right angle viewfinder over time, you know, that you scratch them up. They're good for about six months. And then, you know. Really? So, yeah. uh, why, why is that? I don't know. I guess I, they just come into contact with the, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, when you do the kind of volume we do, I think it's funny sometimes that my wife said to me the other day, she said, hey, what do you shoot with? I said, well, I shoot D750. And she goes, what do you think those would be worth? Maybe we could sell one if we got low on money. I said, well, honey, I'm on my fifth shutter on this one and my fourth shutter on the other one. I think they're worth about 20 bucks a piece. Just like brand new, just like, that, you know? like a re, it's got a rebuilt engine, man. It's brand yeah, new. Yeah, exactly. The, the, like um, my Civic with 154,000 miles on it. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> um, well, the, you know, the other thing you can do is, um, depending on the camera, I guess, no, any any DSLR, you can adjust the, I forgot, is it diopter, is that the right word? Yeah, so yeah I can, you can dial in my prescription. It's yeah, I can take my glasses right. off and use the viewfinder if I want to go that route. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd go without glasses if I can't see the LED screen in the back and I can't read the controls. And I feel your that. pain. I feel your pain. This is, this is my life. Um, what else we got? I was looking at the comments a little bit and might have missed some of your type you guys were saying, but 
Uh, well, sorry, gentlemen. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, gotten to uh, the time where I have to, uh, to chime out and uh, get dinner so, going for the kids here. Yeah, appreciate but, you uh, jumping on. I, I asked Rob kind of last minute if he can jump on. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's good to, good to see you. Um, good so, no, it was, a lot, it was a lot of fun, and I uh, wish you guys well, and uh, hopefully we'll be uh, seeing you guys again soon. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do something similar soon. Reach out. Definitely. Follow All us right. on uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and then uh, hopefully we'll uh, keep in touch. Look at Rob's Instagram page. That's a good one. It looks like a good one. Right. I don't know if I'm following. All right. See you later. Okay. Take care. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Take care. And we're actually uh, an hour in now, so I don't know. Do we want to wrap up? Or I, I want to see. I want to see Juan. You had Juan's web page up for a minute, and I want to see it again because that was that was some outstanding work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we we mm. thank you. Uh, Dang, we, uh, buddy. We, <laughs> I got, I got to tell you, with the group we have here, we didn't spend too much time talking about actual photos, but you're right. This guy is a great photographer. We, we were um, talk, doing some of these other ones, and I'm trying to find a page on mine so I can move on it. There we go. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> the, guy's, the guy's a pro right here, and um, it's a good chance to show a few of these. I'll just kind of scroll. Maybe you can, um, maybe you want to say, maybe you want to uh, narrate a little bit or... Here's a dusk shot you will not be shooting anytime soon. I see. Not now. Not for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good work. Well, can I ask you a question? Um, I know you've lived several places. I hope none of them is ever Springfield, Missouri. Um, so I, I just prefer you never moved anywhere near where I'm doing business, okay? <laughs> okay, no problem. All right. I don't, I don't want to compete against you. <laughs> I used to live in, in Vancouver for, for more than a year and oh, really? uh, yeah, yeah, in Canada. And uh, I have never been, I, I mean, I have been several times in the United States, but I haven't, I haven't worked there yet. Yeah. Some, some time. I don't know. Probably if I have the opportunity, why not? Well, wait about six months. What? Wait about six months. You don't want to come right now, but, uh, should we, yeah, should we, should we I mean, a... I'm also I'm all the time looking for opportunities, and I love to travel, and I love to live in other places. I live in in England, I live in in Europe. I used to live in Canada. Yeah, uh, but I would like to have an uh, an uh, an experience in in the United States. Where are you originally from? From Ecuador. Well, I was born I was born in Chile, in Santiago uh -huh. de Chile, uh -huh. but I, I'm not from Chile. Just my my parents they were they were working at that time there. Oh, so okay. by, by coincidence, I, I I was born there, but I, I'm Ecuadorian. Whiskey, nice. Yeah, I'm an advertising photographer, and I also love to do real estate photography and um, architectural photography. I'm into video too, which is very nice and it's difficult too. Yeah. You know, the, the thing here in Ecuador is that the market is not big. So you have to, what is the word in English? You, you have to be diverse, right. trying to offer your, your services. Because if you just do one thing, the market is not, is not big enough. So you, you cannot manage your, your, you cannot pay your bills uh, just with, with one, uh, with one uh, professional activities that's why you have to work in different things yeah this is a small market a very small country Iran okay. would be, be great if you could share everybody's links in the uh, in the comments so then when if anybody wants to take this and you know rewatch it rebroadcast it share it out there then yeah yes indeed um, I'll look at uh, the best way to do that after I'm learning along with Along with doing this, I'm learning the best ways to do it. Perfect. Um, I uh, just looking through, like the little back running the show thing is keeping me busy here. Uh, uh, we have someone chiming in from Australia. Click that link, the first the first comment, Rick, and tell us your reality in Australia. Uh, he's the creative director for Remax Elite. Wait, it just moved. I just found it. Um, wants to know about what's more as possible we'd like i mean i'd like to hear um what the working situation is like there um, in different places in the world and it'd be great um, let's see yeah i'm just I'm trying to look through some of the comments see if there's some good things to bring up 
Um, where were, uh, did I? Yeah, we still have Juan Jose's uh, photos up. Um, and I would say anybody that sees this, seeing it or sees it later, shoot questions our way. I'll try to tag everybody on Facebook. Does that work? Everybody's. Yeah. I'll try to tag everybody that's on here on Facebook and uh, and give the links so that they're there. I'm not sure what the best place to do it is, but yeah, it'd be great. Uh, Juan Jose's website is Orbital, what is it? Orbital, orbitalvision.com. Let me see. At the beginning today, I was ready to go with some, oh, here we go. There it is. Look at that. And we can uh, move up to Randy's, Henderson Images. Mm -hmm. All colorful virtualtours.com. I bought Henderson Images in 2007. And the next day, a guy from Alabama called me and offered me a ridiculous amount of money for that website because he had, I guess he'd set up the front end of his business and just hadn't gotten around to buying the, the, the website. And um, I didn't sell it to him, but. Um, I've had several options for that. And now I, I kind of realize, I mean, that's a pretty common last name. So I kind of realized how rare it was that I was able to snag that. But. You, guys, you guys all have your own names for URLs? Nobody's doing that? <laughs> Sorry, I was reading. Oh. I just I just started um, just as a hub. Just my just, It's not really built out yet, but to show all the things that I'm, that I'm doing, the panorama site, and different kinds of photography, um, just to kind of get that built out so that you can tell people one place to go so they can find us all. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a tough thing to do. I think we're all doing different things. And especially when we're diversified in not only photography, but diversified in, in different ways. Um, I thought I was showing that site, but I wasn't, was I? <laughs> no. Uh, let's see. So in the comments, are these questions that Will is asking or are they statements? It's hard to tell about um, danger pay, liability clauses. I think there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of different kinds of, um, different levels of typing going on in there. There's yeah. a lot of things I, I had to figure out kind of what they meant in a lot of the, in a lot of cases. So it was, um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Um, let me pull that out there. There we go. Some right. new, com new comments coming in. Um, there was no link searched first comment, no link. Mm. I think we're gonna be wrapping up, but we can. Uh, StreamYard, here we go. I'm putting in, I'm just adding something to the comments myself. Um, let's see. If we missed your questions, you know, um, shoot them either in the comments either later um, or, uh, yeah, reach out on Facebook to any of the guys and um, take it from there. What else? You, anything else you guys want to share that didn't come up? Um, we can kind of wrap things up, try to keep it to an hour just to respect everybody's time. I'm having fun, but um, yeah. I would just say those uh, photographers that are out there, you know, just uh, keep educating people, you know, tell them what you're doing to keep people feeling at ease, um, follow the rules. You know, if the, if a mandate comes out and, and uh, they don't state photographer or virtual tour operator, um, just take all the steps, you know, create a COVID-19 form, go to my website, grab it, take it, use it, um, you know, and, and then just cover everything. Like, you know, when, when I was a realtor in real estate law class, the, the, the first three things that you learn is disclosure, disclosure, disclosure. So disclose everything that you're doing and, and then just to cover yourself, um, you know, but I think the more information you can share with the general public, the realtors, even the, the, the broker, broker owners, of what you're doing, make videos so it's out and it's out there in social to prove what you're doing. Um, you know, you you can cover yourself and then you can continually grow your business as well. Yeah, take advantage take advantage of the time and 
everybody's everybody's on video now. We're all doing it, right? It's not. Yeah. It's, you don't have to have any special uh, equipment. Your 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 smartphone is enough, and share what you're doing and get the word out. And yeah, and uh, common sense, right? Isn't that the biggest? Yeah, because what it all comes down to every time. I know it's boring, but well, cool guys. Thanks for thanks for doing this. This is fun to have a group on. Yeah, um, hopefully, you. We, thank you. Yeah, hopefully, we do some more like it. And uh, for those watching, uh, tell us what you liked and didn't like. And if you want to do, to do more, if this continues past the quarantine, it'll only be because people had said we like it and what you're doing. Right now, we're really doing it for fun and for our own sanity and all that, and uh, reconnecting with people. Um, so yeah, let us know the good and the bad. And um, I guess with that, how do we how do we end? Do we have an ending for a show? Do we have a uh, with that? <laughs> yeah. with, with that with that, you know, I don't want to say just be safe. Everybody says that, but I like it, lined up and, yet tonight. So <laughs> enjoy enjoy your uh, epoch quarantine. Ep epoch well, don't, quarantine quarantine. Yeah, don't touch your face, but more importantly, don't touch other people's faces. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it with that. Don't don't touch other people's faces. <laughs> Adios, everybody. Yeah. Adios. Thanks. Gracias. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.